This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is a mixed play kind of day here on Covering the Spread because we do have six games across tonight in Major League Baseball. We'll break down the money lines and strikeout props I like there first. But then later on, because it's just a, a more limited slate for baseball, we are going to talk Formula One in Belgium at Spa for this weekend, breaking down what my numbers say about the field and one driver I am quite a bit higher on than the market. All that and more coming up today here on Covering the Spread. This is Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media at FanDuel Research here to break down tonight's MLB slate and talk about Formula One at Spa for this weekend. We'll dive into all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder, if you want some analysis on tonight's U.S. Women's World Cup game, Make sure you check out our podcast from Monday with Dr. Ed Fang. He broke down that game against the Netherlands, rematch of the 2019 Women's World Cup Final. We talked about uh, Ed's thoughts on the markets of that game, some props, and early takeaways from the Women's World Cup. So find that on Covering the Spread, wherever you get your podcast, but also on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+, Plus, on Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and Roku as well. We've got some exciting news over at NumberFire. Beginning now, you can find all of number fi- all the NumberFire content from the analysts you know over at a new home called FanDuel Research. FanDuel Research is on the FanDuel domain, meaning you can now do your own research on the same site where you place bets and submit daily fantasy lineups. And don't worry, all the NumberFire tools are still in place over at NumberFire.com, so your daily process can remain the same for now. As a thank you for your years of loyalty, we'll be running free rolls over on FanDuel Research now through the end of the NFL season to check out this week's free play for that aforementioned Women's World Cup game. Go to the Welcome to FanDuel Research article over on FanDuel Research. Find that by going to FanDuel.com slash research. It's on the homepage right there at the top. Welcome to FanDuel Research at FanDuel.com slash research. And be sure to check out all the great content while you're there. Don't forget to get that free roll entered tonight. FanDuel.com slash research for all of that. Let's dig in now to tonight's MLB slate and break down some spots where I'm seeing value based on my money line and strikeout prop models over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The first one is going to be the Rangers taking on the Astros. I'll have a prop in this game later on as well. But I do show value in the Rangers money line, which is currently plus 158 over at FanDuel Sportsbook as they take on the Astros. And part of the reason why I buy into this bet is that My model does not have a high opinion of Andrew Heaney, which we'll talk about later on. And despite that, I am still showing value in the Rangers here. Heaney has had big issues with hard contact, and that's why the model's not super high on him. But I also think that his offense can't support him a bit here because the Rangers, very good against lefties. They have a 130 WRC+, plus, even with no Corey Seager on the current active roster. They're facing Framber Valdez, who is a tremendous pitcher. I love Framber Valdez. He gets ground balls, get some strikeouts. It's an elite combination. He hasn't quite been on uh, the best form recently, and it's also a very tough spot for him, again, facing this Rangers team that can belt lefties even without Seager being healthy. So when you combine, you, I guess you do combine, Heaney not being great that well in my model with Valdez doing what he does with how good the Rangers are against lefties, you put it all in the blender, and the Astros should be favored here, obviously, uh, but... I have the Rangers win odds at 44.3%. The implied odds of plus 158 are 38.8%. So a pretty big gap there in favor of the Rangers. So I buy into that again because I don't think super highly of Heaney, but the model and neither does the model, but we're still showing value here even after accounting for his presence. So to me, the Rangers money line plus 158, a quality bet for tonight over on FanDuel.com. The second money line where I'm showing value for tonight is one that's bounced around quite a bit this morning. It was, I think they were like minus 110 at open. They were plus 102 a couple minutes ago, and they're now plus 106. That is Chicago White Sox taking on the Chicago Cubs. And I like the White Sox side of this matchup with it currently sitting at plus 106 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. And I think if it continues to bounce around, I would still show value in the White Sox, even if they were to get to even money because I have the White Sox favored in this game. My model puts their win odds at 55.6%. The implied odds of plus one of six are 48.5%. 
And the reason that the White Sox are higher from need in the market is I'm pretty high on Lance Lynn right now. He's been on a heater since he reintroduced his curveball. We discussed this with Pitching Ninja, Rob Freeman, last week on the show. And he said, yeah, it's pitch he's always had, but he's gone back to it with more confidence recently. And it's worked out well. Seven start sample for Lynn with more curveballs. And he has a 3.30 skill interactive ERA with a 32.6% strikeout rate. Lynn has not had the best results. But his bad of all data is largely fine, and he's facing some tough teams. So I would say sometimes when you have better peripherals and results, it indicates that a person has rough bad of ball data. And that's not really the case with Lynn. He just, I think he's faced a lot of tough teams that has led to those bad results. This time around, Lynn is at home. He's facing a team with a league average WRC plus against righties. The White Sox offense is pretty rough for sure, but... Hopefully getting Yoel Moncada back can help a bit there. So I agree with the model on this one, that the market is too light on the White Sox here. So the White Sox are plus 106. As long as they're still plus money, still a bet I would take over at FanDuel Sportsbook, plus 106 right now. So two money lines I am liking for tonight are going to be the Texas Rangers at plus 158 and the Chicago White Sox at plus 106. A couple of strikeout props I like for tonight as well, and both these are unders on uh, strikeout props. First one is going to be in the Tigers versus Angels game. It is a revenge game for Michael Lorenzen, former Angel, in this one, but I do like the under on his strikeout prop. This has shifted. It was plus 118 earlier on. It is now plus 112. So there has been some movement towards the under here, which I agree with, but it does mean not as advantageous as it was before. Still good enough for me to take it, though. Now, let's talk through the Lorenzen situation here because I have Lorenzen projected right at this number. Strikeout prop is four and a half. I've got him at 4.6. So that may make it odd to take an under here because it sounds like the market is pretty much on him. But this is why looking at the actual uh, the actual juice on these does matter quite a bit because it actually does tip the scales in a significant fashion. Plus 112 implies that the uh, the implied odds that Lorenzen goes under four and a half are, you know, so it, it, they're decently high. And if I run my model, the odds that Lorenzen gets to five strikeouts, basically, basically 50%. It is 50.8% above, 49.2% below. So effectively, if we can get anything, you know, not quite plus money because uh, 49% uh, isn't quite, is going to be a little bit above that. But plus 112, the implied odds there 47.2%. So we do have a good amount of cushion there to feel good about an under on Lorenzo at four and a half, even with his projection being right there at 4.6. Looking at Lorenzo specifically, he's made 14 starts since he started featuring a slider more, and he has topped this mark just five times, five out of 14 starts while holding an 18.3% strikeout rate. Now he is at home today. He is facing a team with a slightly above average strikeout rate against righties, but the projections account for that for both those factors. So to me, if you're getting plus 112 on Lorenzen under four and a half strikeouts, I feel like that is an advantageous enough number to take it. It's not as good as plus 118 shop around. There was a plus 120 available earlier on this morning. So shop around, see what you can find. But I do think that the under on Lorenzen is still profitable at plus 112. Other strikeout prop for tonight is very, very similar. Going back to that Rangers versus Astros game. Now, in betting the Rangers money line, I am saying that I have faith in the Rangers to win this game. And typically, that will correlate with the strikeout over. I actually like the under on Heaney. As mentioned before, I'm skeptical of what he's been doing recently. And we're getting plus 126 on the under. Now, this situation with Heaney is very similar to the situation with Lorenzen, where I have him projected pretty much right here. He's a little bit lower at 4.5. and that implies, again, pretty much anything plus money on the under is going to be a good bet. And this one is at plus 126. We're getting a lot of cushion there at plus 126. He has made nine starts since he started to re-increase his slider usage, which, you know, I thought would increase his strikeout rate because it's been a high strikeout pitcher in the past. But even in this nine-start sample, his strikeout rate is just 23.7%. He's facing a very low strikeout team, 17% strikeout rate against lefties on the Astros current active roster. So I have faith that the Rangers can win. I just think that this number is too high and we should be pushed to take the under here. This is not a situation where I would same game parlay these as ge in general. I am hesitant to do so because uh, I want to get the individual legs out there, but especially here where they are kind of 
working against each other. Because if Heaney doesn't get a lot of strikeouts, that probably decreases the odds the Rangers win. So these are ones I definitely would want to make sure are individual legs versus part of a same game parlay. So Heaney plus 126, the Rangers to win, or Heaney under four and a half strikeouts plus 126, and the Rangers to win at plus 158, the two spots where I'm seeing value in this game. But I would ensure you keep those legs separate because they are much better as separate bets because they do kind of work against each other than if they were to be parlayed together. So for baseball tonight, like the Rangers plus 158, that the White Sox plus 106, Michael Lorenzen under four and a half strikeouts plus 112, and Andrew Heaney under four and a half strikeouts at plus 126. That's going to wrap up MLB for today. Let's now talk about some Formula One. Uh, I was going to talk some NASCAR today too, but the NASCAR betting market's not up at yet at FanDuel Sportsbook. So we'll come back to that probably on Friday because we're going to talk uh, Women's World Cup and uh, college football with Ed on Thursday. So we'll circle back for NASCAR on Friday. Hopefully markets on FanDuel are up by then. But this week's Formula One race is in Belgium. It's at Spa and it's one of my favorite tracks in the circuit. Really fun one to watch. And it's the final race before the summer break. So I had to make sure I got some F1 in for today uh, before they go on vacation. I've adjusted my model more to account for McLaren. I think it's finally viewing them properly after I thought it was too low entry last week. Another week of confirmation that they are legitimate. I actually show a smidge of value in Oscar Piastri to win, but not going to take it. So it does make me feel better about my model and thinking that it's properly accounting for what has been a resurgent team. The one bet I like most this week is actually a bit of a surprise to me. And I would say it's a surprise, but it's not as big of a surprise as the median lap times of this driver in the race last week. And that is going to be on Daniel Ricciardo to finish inside the top 10, which is currently plus 350 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. It was Ricciardo's first race at Alpha Tauri, and I went in expecting a learning curve. Because it is a new car, it is a bad car, and the last time we saw Ricardo, he was struggling in that McLaren last year. Of course, he did run well at the, the Red Bull tire test and stuff like that, so we had some anecdotal evidence that Ricardo may have refound his groove, but nothing actually on track as of yet. So I went in pretty skeptical, and I had Ricardo slotted in behind Sonoda when building out my model for last week. So went in with pretty low expectations of Ricardo. And Ricardo did get caught up in a lap one incident that was not his fault. Uh, Joe Guan Yu got penalized that incident. So Ricardo not at fault there. Got some damage, but the damage was not too bad. But it did push Ricardo down to 18th in the running order. So he was working from behind effectively the entire race. From that point on, after he dropped down to 18th, Ricardo was flying. He actually had the eighth best median lap time of any driver during the race last week. And that is partly because the two Alpines were out. So we have to keep that take that the grain of salt where you have two guys in contention for top tens consistently who are not in the running. So top eight with an asterisk or an eighth place mark with an asterisk there. But Ricardo's median lap time was better than Charles Leclerc. It was better than Fernando Alonso. And it was better than Lance Stroll. So Ricardo was phenomenal and he exceeded my expectations by a wide margin. He did rebound to finish 13th and coming back from 18th is, is pretty impressive in that regard, but it also doesn't snag your attention. I think that's why we're getting Ricardo at plus 350 for this week, 13th place. Who cares about that? It's not going to sag your attention, but the median lap times should. My jaw actually dropped when I saw Ricardo's median lap time from that race. It was the best median lap time relative to the field for any Alpha Tauri driver since Pierre Gasly at Monaco last year. It's been well more than a year. That was May of last year is the last time we saw an Alpha Tauri with that kind of pace relative to the field. Now, talking about this from a modeling perspective, I can't just take Ricardo's pace from that race and plug it in because... There are a lot of things that can impact median lap time. I try to account for that, try to account for pit stops, all those things. But it's not great to go on a one race sample. So what I did is combined uh, the prior that I had for Ricardo based on his equipment, based on the speed he showed last year, and combine that with the pace he showed last week. And that prior is still in my model to an extent. But once we add in this pace from last week, Ricardo grades out really well. My model now is Ricardo in the same tier as those two Alpines, Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly and Lance Stroll. Ocon and Gasly are both plus 130 for a top 10. Stroll is minus 105 and Ricardo is plus 350. So that's a big, big gap between Ricardo and the guys who my model used to being in the same tier as him for this week. 
Now, it is very possible my model is just off on Ricardo. Like that does happen. It's based on just one race. He finished 13th there, so it didn't blow the world away. But I trust the process behind the numbers here. And Ricardo was really, really fast. So my model is Ricardo at 40.5% for a top 10. His implied odds are 22.2%. It's a big gap, and it should make us wary. Anytime you're way off in the market, the market's usually right. So keep that in mind. If you decide to bet Ricardo to finish top 10, keep in mind, we could be off here. That is very much possible. Uh, the market is not bought into Ricardo yet, and the market, again, tends to be very efficient. I think we should buy into Ricardo, though, based on those median lap times. Based on the fact that I think Sonoda has been underrated by the market earlier this year, too. So I think that maybe it's just Nick DeVries dragging down that entire team. I feel like we should be in on Ricardo. So if I'm betting anything for Spa this week, it'll be Ricardo for a top 10 at plus 350. I think that is actually a very quality bet uh, for this week. So Daniel Ricardo plus 350 for a top 10 is my favorite Formula One bet for this week over at Spa. That's all we got here for today here on Covering the Spread. As I mentioned, we are back once again tomorrow. We're going to break down the Women's World Cup match. We'll recap the Netherlands-USA match and then take a look forward for them as well. And then we'll talk some college football futures with Ed to get you ready for the month of August, which is just around the corner. If you got any questions for me, I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Make sure you're following FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Again, check out the podcast uh, by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page and over on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Enjoy the baseball tonight. Enjoy Team USA versus the Netherlands. Should be a really fun match there. We'll talk to you all once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 